my next guest had a seat at the Roseanne Show writer's table during its first incredibly successful run in the 90s. He worked directly with Roseanne Barr herself. He is Stan Zimmerman. Stan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I mean, an executive producer uh, for, the, for the Roseanne reboot, Bruce Rasmussen, told the New York Times, quote, we were gut punched. It was really depressing that one stupid sentence that she sent out destroyed a whole bunch of people's jobs. I, I don't know how many people, Stan, you're in touch with from this current uh, reboot, but that's who I immediately thought about, right? Everyone from the production team, camera, grip, writers, actors, all affected by this. So many of them found out by watching the news. How are they handling it? I haven't talked to any of them personally, but uh, just reading from what they had to say, and I know we're also upset that the legacy of the show has been tarnished probably forever. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get involved in the show in its original incarnation, because it was speaking about Americans that we had never seen on television and followed them through deaths, births, loves, marriages, all different kinds of people, and I wanted to be a part of that show. I want to talk about your role in a specific episode you wrote in a second, but do you agree that ABC made the right decision? I think there's uh, some opportunity to possibly go back to the show. There's a knee-jerk reaction sometimes to just push everybody away and under the rug, but to me, then we'll be back here in 15 years being shocked that there's still racism. I think it's important to have the dialogue. And what was so great about the show is that we were able to talk about so many issues on that show, including like the episode that I wrote, of the, which is a lesbian kiss episode. Well, let's talk about that. So you wrote this episode, it was the, during the original series where it, it involved two women kissing and you said that Roseanne used to champion issues like that. Now, granted that episode, I believe is 1994. What yes. changed? I cannot get into the heart or mind of Roseanne, uh, unless I have some Ambien, perhaps, but um, <laughs> I don't know what happened to her. The person that I knew that we work with was a champion for the underdog, for people of color, especially the LGBT community. ABC was not going to air our episode, and she went to them with Tom Arnold and said, if you don't air it, I'll buy time on HBO and I will put the episode on. So that's the person I knew, and that's why it's been so hard to figure out who this person is now, and the character has changed. Calling black women, Stan, apes. Would she ever use that kind of language on set? I never heard anything like that. That's why it's so shocking for so many people and even people that are in the writer's room or were supposed to be today, but no longer have jobs. Do you think ABC was playing with fire at all? Because it's not like these conspiracy theories that she's been tweeting about happened yesterday, right? This has been happening for a while with Roseanne. They, they knew what they were getting themselves into and probably down the line they knew at some point something like this would come up. Uh, I'm surprised no one officially took her phone away or any family members helped her out. So uh, this was, it's very upsetting by so many people. Tell me about your t-shirt with the number 13 and what so, this relates to Roseanne, how this yeah. relates to Roseanne. So usually on TV shows you have a staff of writers, maybe 10, 11. She brought in a lot of her stand-up comic friends, uh, her and Tom Arnold. They were still married at the time. And we had 21 writers on our show. And the very first day of filming, she had us all line up and they printed t-shirts with numbers. And their joke was, because they were known for firing so many people, is that they could just point to your number and fire you without actually knowing your name. My birthday's the 13th, so I got in line for that. I didn't really understand at the time the ramifications or what that really meant. Thinking back now, it, it was not uh, the best work environment to have that attitude. And we were told when we were hired, uh, don't let her see the whites of your eyes or she could point and fire you. So I always stood behind the tallest person uh, on set. So that was her M.O., yes. firing people. And she, again, she probably thought it was funny. But this, that was not funny. Her joke uh, about Valerie is not funny. And we cannot accept that. And we have to discuss why she would even think in this world today that something like that would be humorous, because it's not. Well, Stan, you know, Alts is famous for firing people. Uh, <laughs> Donald J. Trump, the president of the United States, and, you know, two months ago when this reboot, when the first episode came out and was so extraordinarily successful, he took credit for it. Um, you know, a, a lot of folks in this country actually give ABC credit for telling a story that's more inclusive of what 
um, a, a, a sliver of, of this country feels are, you know, is ignored by mainstream networks. What of all of this do you think has to do with Trump? Well, obviously he sets a tone as the president of the United States, but she has to take responsibility for her actions and for what she said. And she's kind of been all over the map with it between yesterday and today and who knows in the next following days. I wish there was some creative way that she could step aside, give her profits to the NAACP and let the actors, which there are so many talented people on the show, could keep working and still tell the stories of middle America and people that are suffering and wanting to work day to day and having to look through the couch for loose change just to get by. Last question, zero to 10, 10 being absolutely she'd do that. What are the, what are the chances she gives all her money to the NAACP, Stan? Uh, I'm an optimist, so I'm gonna give it a 10, but uh, I'm not crossing my fingers or betting on it.